Have you ever felt an irresistible urge to do something even when you knew it wasn't good for you? Welcome to the world of addiction, an often misunderstood realm where the allure of temporary pleasure overshadows the long-term damage. Among these addictions, one that is increasingly prevalent yet seldom discussed is pornography addiction. It's a silent epidemic, creeping into our lives under the veil of digital media, and it's not alone. As technology advances, so too does the scope of digital addiction. From social media to video games, our screens are becoming the modern-day Pandora's box. Each click, each swipe, a potential slide into the abyss. It's a pressing concern that calls for our attention. To understand is to equip oneself to fight. So let's delve deeper into this hidden world. Now, if you find this topic intriguing, give this video a like, share it around, and don't forget to hit that subscribe button and turn on the notification bell. Addictions, whether to substances or digital content, share a common thread. They hijack your brain. But how does this happen? Let's dive into the neurology of it. When we engage in pleasurable activities, our brain releases a neurotransmitter known as dopamine. This gives us a sense of reward and satisfaction. However, when we repeatedly engage in addictive behaviors, our brain starts to adapt. It releases excessive amounts of dopamine, creating an abnormal pleasure response. This is where substances and digital addictions like pornography addiction come into play. They provide an intense and immediate dopamine rush that is hard to match with normal activities. This flood of dopamine brings about changes in the brain's structure and functioning. It alters the brain's reward system, causing it to demand more and more of the addictive behavior to achieve the same level of satisfaction. This is what we call neuroadaptation. Just like how a city adapts to an increased number of cars by building more roads and highways, the brain adapts to the excess dopamine by reducing its production and responsiveness to it. This leaves the individual feeling flat, low, or depressed when not engaged in the addictive behavior. And it's not just about the reward system. Addiction also disrupts homeostasis, the brain's way of maintaining a stable internal environment. The brain finds itself in a constant state of imbalance due to the addictive behavior, causing a range of physical and emotional problems. So you see, addiction to substances and digital content are not fundamentally different. They both lead to the same patterns of behavior and consequences. They both alter the brain's reward system and disrupt its homeostasis. And here's the kicker. Overcoming addiction isn't simply about resisting temptation. It's about restoring the brain's normal functioning and achieving neuroadaptation. It's about reclaiming control of your brain. So it's not just a matter of willpower, it's a battle against your own brain. How can you fight against your own brain? The answer lies in self-binding. Self-binding, in essence, is about setting up hurdles between you and the object of your addiction. It's a strategic approach to resisting temptation, a way of outsmarting your own brain. Imagine a scenario. You're trying to cut down on your screen time, especially in the late hours. A simple self-binding strategy might be to not keep your phone in your bedroom. By doing this, you're creating a physical barrier that discourages mindless scrolling before sleep. Self-binding is not about willpower alone. It's about structuring your environment in a way that supports your goals. It's a recognition that our brains can sometimes work against our best interests and that we need to plan accordingly. These strategies are not a cure, but a tool to help manage addictive behaviors and prevent relapse. Remember, the goal is to create barriers between you and your addiction. Breaking free from addiction is a journey. And like all journeys, it has its challenges. Now, imagine you're on a boat floating down a river of familiar habits. It's comfortable, it's easy, but it's also leading you towards a waterfall of consequences. You need to row against the current, break free from the river's grip. It's tough, it's exhausting, but it's the only way to avoid the waterfall. Now, let's bring this analogy back to reality. The river represents addictive behaviors. The boat is you and the waterfall. That's the adverse effects of addiction, the destruction it can bring to your life. And rowing, that's your journey to recovery. During this journey, you'll face withdrawal symptoms. These are the waves that try to topple your boat, make you lose control, 
They can be physical like restlessness and fatigue or psychological like anxiety and depression. But they're temporary, they fade away, just like how waves eventually still. Perseverance is your oar in this journey. It's what you need to keep rowing, to keep fighting against the current. It's the determination to paddle through the waves of withdrawal symptoms, to not let them push you back into the river's flow. But perseverance alone isn't enough. You also need self-development and self-discovery. Think of these as your compass and map. They help you navigate through the recovery process, show you the right direction. They allow you to recognize harmful habits, understand why they exist, and find healthier alternatives. Self-development is about building new skills, creating new habits that replace the addictive ones. It's about learning to row in different ways, to adapt to the changing currents. Self-discovery, on the other hand, is about understanding yourself, your triggers, your vulnerabilities. It's about knowing the river, its twists and turns, so you can anticipate and prepare for them. The journey to recovery is not easy. It's a struggle against the current, a battle against the waves, but it's a journey worth undertaking. Because at the end of it, you're not just avoiding the waterfall, you're reaching calmer, healthier waters. But remember, every step you take is a step towards reclaiming control over your life. No one can walk this path for you, but you. In this journey of recovery, it's you who determines the trajectory. You might face skepticism, even resistance, but remember, it's your battle to fight. It's your mountain to climb. Let's dispel the myth that addiction recovery is a passive process. It's not. It's active. It's dynamic. And it requires your full participation. Don't shy away from taking proactive steps to break free from the chains of addiction. You might stumble, you might falter, but don't let that deter you. Each stumble is a lesson. Each falter a stepping stone towards your ultimate goal. Have the courage to pick yourself up, dust yourself off, and keep moving forward. Remember, you're not alone in this journey. Reach out, seek help, share your story. There's strength in unity, strength in shared experiences. So take a deep breath, muster your courage, and take that first step. It's your life, and you have the power to change it. If you've made it this far, we hope this video has been both enlightening and empowering. We encourage you to like this video and subscribe to our channel for more content that can inspire, educate, and guide you in your journey. But before you go, we have a question for you. What's one habit you're trying to break, and how are you going about it? We invite you to share your experiences in the comment section below. Your story could be the inspiration someone else needs to take their first step towards recovery. Thank you for watching, and remember, every step you take, no matter how small, is a step towards reclaiming control over your life. We wish you strength and perseverance on your journey. Goodbye and take care.